what's going on everybody? I'm Noah from PhoneDog.com and uh, it's the dog fight to end all dog fights. Well, not really because there's always going to be another one. But for right now, it's the battle, the summer blockbusters. And to me, these are the two biggest dogs on the block. The HTC Dread Incredible from Verizon and the Apple iPhone 4 from AT&T. You've got uh, Android, Google, HTC, Verizon going up against Apple, the iOS, and AT&T. Um, to me, this is the, this is the marquee showdown. Uh, other worthy contenders for sure kicking around, most notably the Evo 4G from uh, HTC and Sprint, the Motorola Droid X with my fingerprints all over it from Motorola and Verizon, the Samsung Galaxy S, which is uh, coming soon to all four major carriers in the U.S. Actually, I think uh, at least five, I think six carriers now in the U.S. slated to, to have it, at least five. But uh, for my money... But uh, for my money, the, the, the real big battle here, the big showdown, is between these two. Why? Because in these two phones, you have state-of-the-art technology uh, packaged in a form factor with the widest possible appeal. You've got those larger phones, the Droid X and the uh, Evo, 4.3-inch displays. They're just going to be too big physically for some people. Uh, just, you know, some people are going to be like, this is awesome, but some people just aren't going to want to carry a phone around that's that big. You've got some cool phones like the HTC Aria, uh, the Samsung or Samsung, the Sony Ericsson uh, X10 Mini, that are you know really cool, lots of power, very small, a little too small, or even phones like the uh, the HTC Legend and the MyTouch 3G Slide that have the lower res displays, uh, the HVGA displays. They're gonna be a little too small for some people. But with these phones, they slot right into the sweet spots. 3.5 inch display, 3.7 inch display. They're both thin. They're both easily used in one hand. Uh, they're both very pocketable. And so, you know, and then you've got them, right, the biggest players in the game. Again, you know, Google, HTC, Verizon with the incredible Apple and AT&T um, back in the iPhone. And whatever your personal preference is, whatever you have to say about any of the carriers or companies involved, it's hard to deny that, you know, these are two of. And in my, in my opinion, you can deny my opinion if you want, but in my opinion, these are the two. So let's get to it. iPhone 4, Droid, incredible. Dogfight. Ooh, I smacked. I hope I didn't shatter or scratch them. All right, so here's your summer blockbuster. On the left, iPhone 4. On the right, Droid Incredible. Uh, both phones are out on the market now, although you may have trouble finding either one of them. Uh, the Droid Incredible has been back ordered for a while now due to uh, supply chain problems with the AMOLED display. iPhone 4, uh, you know, all the, the huge pre-sale and uh, pre-sale numbers in the uh, first, you know, couple days, first week it was out. Um, it is available, you know, you have to check your local store for availability, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, the white version, not yet shipping. Uh, but so here you go, this is a 16 gigabyte version of the iPhone 4, and uh, the Droid Incredible is the only way it comes. You know, price-wise, they're both pretty much the same, 200 bucks on contract. The 32 gig iPhone is uh, $300, and then your monthly fees are going to wind out, you know, being roughly the same. We can take a closer look at what it's going to cost, especially if you want to add the tethering, uh, all that kind of thing. Uh, we'll start out right away to say about the networks. You know, it, it, as always, it really depends on where you're going to use the device. Uh, where I am out here in the San Francisco Bay Area, uh, Verizon's a better network. I get better, better voice and data coverage, better, better voice and data service on the Droid Incredible. Um, you know, when the, the iPhone 4 is a step up from the previous iPhones in terms of sound quality, it's got a uh, dual microphone system, noise canceling, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the problem to continue with AT&T's network combined with this new antenna design, the whole death grip thing, we won't get into that, other than to say, you know, problems with the uh, design of the phone when you cover this little area in the bottom left, you lose signal strength. Uh, but you can read all about that on phonehug.com. You're probably sick, sick and tired of hearing about it already. So network-wise, uh, again, it depends where you are. For me, uh, the Droid Incredible gets the nod because Verizon just performs better where I am. Uh, both phones have 3G. Uh, connectivity, Droid Incredible over EVDO, uh, the iPhone over AT&T's HSPA network. iPhone 4 now supports HSUPA for faster upload speeds. Uh, both phones have Wi-Fi, GPS, Bluetooth, all that stuff. Uh, form factor, you know, it, it, it's a tale of two very different designs here. Uh, roughly, you know, very similar uh, shape and size. Um, thickness, iPhone 4 a little bit thinner than the Droid Incredible. Uh, we'll line them up this way. It's actually a little bit easier to see. Uh, they're both very thin, very pocketable. iPhone slightly, you know, slightly thinner. 
Uh, but then the actual, I hit some buttons there. Then the actual, you know, phone itself, iPhone 4 is glass and metal. Dragon Credible is plastic. Um, so, you know, you've got a, a different feel in the hand. The iPhone 4 is a little bit heavier. It feels much uh, kind of denser because it is a little bit thinner and, and a little bit heavier. Uh, both eminently pocketable, pocketable again. I, I actually kind of like how the Droid Incredible is a little bit narrower, kind of a little bit easier for one-handed holding. Uh, but the iPhone feels like a lux much more luxurious object, feels more high-end. Uh, I would think the Droid Incredible might be a little bit more durable because the plastic design is probably going to stand up to, uh, you know, drops and mishaps a little bit better than the, the glass, you know, glass front, glass back design on the iPhone 4. I don't know. I'd be a little more afraid of scratching up or, you know, cracking or, or I suppose, shattering. Uh, the, the actual risk you run shattering the, an iPhone, I, I can't really speak to because I haven't done my own uh, drop tests. This is not a review loaner. This one I had to buy myself to get one right away. Uh, this is a review loaner. So, you know, I guess I could drop the, uh, the Dread Incredible and not worry about, you know, it's not mine. I'm sending it back. But this one, if it breaks, I got to go buy a new one to keep doing coverage on it. So, you know, I got to watch the pennies. Got to take care of it. Point being that uh, I would be a little bit more concerned about damaging the iPhone 4, whereas with the Dread Incredible, you know, worst case scenario, it gets kind of scratched up or gouged. Um, you know, it's plastic, so it's not like you're going to shatter the back of it and destroy the phone. Also, you know, the back the back battery cover comes off on this phone. So theoretically, you could get a replacement uh, with the iPhone. This phone does not have user replaceable parts. So that's something to kind of bear in mind depending on, you know, how you use and take care of your devices. Uh, Styling-wise, I, I give a slight nod to the iPhone 4 just because I really don't like the Droid Incredibles back. I don't like this topographical design. I just It doesn't do anything for me. Uh, that said, I'm not crazy about the new iPhone design from a visual standpoint either. So that's really up to you, you know, which you like better. Um, I think both phones, like I said, hit a, a really nice sweet spot in terms of uh, size versus functionality. Uh, iPhone has a 3.5-inch display, the much ballyhooed Retina display. I hate that name. But that's what Apple's calling it. Uh, it's super high resolution, 640 what is it, uh, 960 by 640, an incredibly high pixel density, and it looks fantastic. I mean, the display, you know what, all the hype aside, it really does look terrific. Um, we'll go into photos here. And so I just took a very similar photo uh, with both phones of a plant uh, in my office. Um, it was hard to get the exact same photo lined up, and I had the phones at the same distance away from the plants. So they came a little differently. Now, this isn't really an objective test of the screens, because it, it takes the cameras into account also. But uh, in terms of just sort of day-to-day -day use, you know, snapping a picture, looking at it, that kind of thing, I've been blown away by the quality of the iPhone screen, and I was not expecting it. If you if you read or watched my coverage of the launch of the phone, I went to the... Uh, the keynote address, WWDC, and then to the press uh, hands-on area where they had the iPhone 4 when it was launched. I wasn't all that taken by the Retina display thing. I was like, ah, hey, it's nice. I don't think it's that big of a deal. Having had the phone now for a couple weeks and been using it, it, it is a big deal. It, it's really, really a great screen. That being said, the Droid Incredible is no slouch at all. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with either one. Droid Incredible, you get 3.7 inches, um, AMOLED, ambient... Um, It's AMOLED technology, uh, whereas the uh, the iPhone 4 is an LCD screen that uses uh, this technology called IPS. Um, so, you know, at 3.7 inches, uh, 800 by 480 pixels. So plenty of pixels on either display for, you know, looking at the web, that kind of stuff. And uh, we'll load up phone dog here over... Uh, 3G network on both devices. Plenty of pixels on either display for, you know, reading pretty much whatever you want to read online, that kind of thing. Um, if you hold them up side by side and you look at the exact same content, I think the iPhone looks nicer. The iPhone actually performs a little bit better in um, harsh sunlight. The AMOLED display does not do well in direct sunlight. Uh, then again, in, in similar lighting conditions, the AMOLED display kind of pops a little bit more in terms of color saturation. But uh, the iPhone is, is overall, you know, I think a little bit better. It's not really lacking. But if you're not looking at them uh, side by side and, you know, you're just using one phone or the other, I think you're going to be plenty happy. I don't think there's anything to worry about. Uh, both phones very responsive. They do the whole pinch and touch or uh, pinch to zoom thing, multi-touch gestures, all that kind of stuff. I'll put them both into widescreen mode here for a second. The, uh, there we go, the droid's done loading now. So um, 
Again, you know, I uh, I don't think you're going to have a problem with either one, but I do give the nod to the iPhone 4 in terms of display quality. Um, otherwise, with the form factor, uh, you've got, you know, the iPhone 4 retains the iPhone's very minimalistic approach. Touchscreen, single button. Uh, with the Dread Incredible, you've got kind of the standard Android setup. Touchscreen, four capacitive touch buttons for home, menu, back, and search. And then you've also got on the Droid Incredible uh, an optical joystick on the bottom, or you know, it uh, optical trackpad rather. It functions as a trackpad, um, lets you select that kind of thing, but it's optical, uh, not actually a physical, physical uh, ball there. Uh, otherwise, on the hardware, uh, iPhone 4 has the front facing camera that works with the FaceTime video chat system, and then on the back, you've got a 5 megapixel camera, autofocus, and flash. Droid Incredible, only one camera on the back, 8 megapixels, dual LED flash, autofocus. iPhone 4 captures 720p HD video. Droid Incredible captures uh, 800 by 480 widescreen video. Uh, Camera-wise, I give the edge to iPhone 4. Um, I know the, the Droid Incredible has a higher pixel, pixel count. Um, to me, the Droid Incredible, you know, it, it, it's a pretty decent camera phone. Uh, it's a good camera phone. Uh, the image quality on the video capture, I think, is maybe a little bit better than the image quality on the, uh, on the still photo capture, and obviously it gets more megapixels. Uh, the iPhone 4, they just, they did a great job, and, and overall it's a better camera. I've been impressed with the stills and the, uh, moving images. So, in terms of over, you know, image quality itself, uh, with the hardware, I give the edge to the iPhone. Uh, otherwise, with the hardware, um... Battery life, iPhone's a little bit better. Uh, Dread Incredible had some, you know, uh, kind of well-documented problems. iPhone 4 battery life is a little bit better than the iPhone 3GS before it. Uh, both phones perform, you know, they, they get, I basically get a day out of either one. Um, the iPhone 4 is more likely to have, to not hit the red zone, you know, that 20% battery left uh, warning before the end of the day. Dread Incredible is more likely to hit it or, you know, it's just going to run out faster uh, being hammered. So a little bit of an edge to iPhone 4 in terms of battery life for me. Um, hopefully we will see a software fix to help the Dread Incredible uh, get the better battery life running Android 2.1 with HTC Sense over it. Uh, we hear that the Android 2.2 update with HTC Sense, so Froyo with HTC Sense coming in December, I believe is the last that I heard. Um, but speaking of software fixes, the iPhone 4 has been plagued by issues. Like I said, the, the issue with the connectivity with the whole death grip thing. There have been some phones that ship with yellow spots or yellow bandings on the screen. Uh, I've been having problems with the proximity sensor. When I'm in a call and I get to um, uh, bring the phone up to my face, it's, it's just been malfunctioning and the screen will come back on when it's not supposed to and I'll accidentally hang up on people, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, uh, software fix... Some kind of fix definitely needed for the iPhone 4. Uh, too many issues going on that, that just are not, are not acceptable. Um, then again, you know, Dragon Crow has been backordered uh, forever now. So both, both devices, just to be fair, both devices having their issues, but I think the Droid Incredible is more reliable. You know, out of these two phones right now, the Droid Incredible is a, a more reliable device uh, because of the combination of, you know, it doesn't have the mission critical bugs in terms of losing connectivity and that kind of thing. And Verizon's a, a more reliable network where I am. That being said, when iPhone 4 works, it works really well. And the voice quality actually, when the signal's strong, has been really, really good. I, I, I was very shocked. Uh, the dual microphone setup, noise canceling, works really well. I guess the new antenna setup might have something to do with it as long as you're not, you know, holding in that one spot. Um, so the voice quality has been really good when it's worked well, but the Dread Incredible has been a more consistent performer in terms of getting a good signal every time.